The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus and the disciples went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. The people were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Just then there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent, and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept on asking one another, What is this, a new teaching? With authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once Jesus' fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. In today's Gospel from Mark chapter 1, verse 21 to 28, we have Jesus beginning his ministry now in Capernaum, which will be his home base. And he goes into the synagogue. He exercises two different kinds of authorities, both related. First authority is through his teaching. And the crowds that were there certainly recognize it. The people were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Here, the scribes were always teaching with a kind of derivative or bureaucratic authority given by their office. They were always quoting from previous rabbis, going back to the Torah. But Jesus speaks with a different authority, not derived or bureaucratic, but through his essence of who he is, God in the flesh, the word of God. He has a charismatic authority, and so he will say, for example, in the Sermon on the Mount, you have heard it said, but I say to you, he is the definitive Torah in the flesh because he's the author of everything. The whole of creation was brought into being through the word of God. So. The word authority comes from the word author. They're very much related. Jesus is the author. He has that authority. And that's why it's so important that he begins his church on Peter and says, You, Peter, are rock. On this rock I will build my church. I give you the keys of the kingdom. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. There's that authority that now Jesus gives to the church through Peter. In Luke chapter 10, verse 16, Jesus goes on to say to the apostles, whoever listens to you, listens to me. So on matters of faith and morals, where there's teaching in a definitive way by the Pope, ex cathedra, or in an ecumenical council, or with all the bishops gathered together in union with the Pope, this teaching would be infallible. And that's a great comfort to us because now we can bank on that teaching being Christ's teaching and we will not be led astray. That's why it's so important to be Catholic because we don't have to reinvent the wheel every time there's a dispute over doctrine. So that's the one type of authority. But there's another exercise as well. When Jesus sees a man in the synagogue with an unclean spirit, This man cries out, what have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Jesus exercises here an authority that binds that spirit, quiets that spirit, muzzles him, and then casts him out. Here, Jesus is fulfilling the prophecy given in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, where God says, I will put enmity between the serpent and the woman, between the serpent's seed and the woman's. He will crush your head. And here it is. Jesus is the one who is crushing the head of the serpent by casting him out. He's continuing basically what was begun in the desert when Satan tried to tempt Jesus and Jesus resisted, quoting scripture. He's continuing now. He is the strong man confiscating the devil's goods, which is, of course, all of humanity. So Jesus sees this poor man and This man is kind of a representative figure of all that has been affected by original sin. 
Jesus has come to undo the fall. And that's exactly what he's doing. The very first miracle is an exorcism. Well, what we see here is that Jesus' words are not just descriptive, they are performative. We see this even back in the book of Genesis where God said, let there be light and there is light. It's performative. Well, this is what Jesus is doing with that demon. Jesus does more miraculous miracles every day for us. One will be right here on the altar where Jesus through the priest will speak and bread and wine will be changed into his body, blood, soul, and divinity. Now that's an awesome miracle. And that's why we've come out in the cold because we want to partake in that authority, in that miracle, and have now the word of God in us. What's the effect of all this authority? We see it in the first reading. There, a woman is in great distress. Hannah is barren. In the Old Testament, that was a great curse. And she's praying to the Lord that she would have a son. She's praying so fervently that the priest Eli thinks that she has had too much wine. So now she's being even mocked. But once she explains to Eli, and Eli realizes she is, is a woman who is in great need, and her prayer is very solemn, Eli says, Go in peace. The God of Israel grant the petition you have made to him. Hannah accepts the word of the priest as speaking from God and went to her quarters, ate and drank with her husband, and her countenance was sad no longer. She believed that her prayer would be answered through the words of the priest. And indeed, she had a child. This child would grow up to be one of the greatest prophets in the Old Testament, Samuel, who would be powerful in word because the God would speak through him. Well, Hannah breaks out in joy in today's responsorial canticle from 1 Samuel chapter 2, and she says, My heart exalts in the Lord, my strength is exalted in my God. Now that's the effect of what we should be experiencing. When we hear the word of God, when we read it in the scriptures and meditate on it, when we receive the word in the Eucharist, our heart should exalt, our strength lifted up, goes on to say, the bows of the mighty are broken, but the feeble gird on strength. That's what we're doing. We're girding on strength tonight. The word of God that we're hearing and Christ's body, blood, soul, and divinity. So with that, let us have great hope even in these dark days. Christ and his authority is coming into us, strengthening us for the days ahead. Let us pray.